Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and this is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code every morning before we go out and fight the good fight. You can catch the EIA every day at 9 a.m. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I'm really excited about this week's video series. We're going to be dealing with sizing short circuit and ground fault protection. Now, by the end of this week, you are going to be a pro at sizing short circuit, ground fault protection. We're going to take it piece by piece by piece. Let's get to it. All right, so remember, when we're dealing with short circuit ground fault protection, that's going to be our first breaker or fuse like we learned last week. If you want to go back up, we started off in motors. Now we're heading down this trail. I want you guys to learn inside, outside how to size motors, not only for your journeyman and master's license, but also for when you're doing out in the field. Let's get to it. All right, so today we're going to lay the groundwork for all short circuit and ground fault protection sizing. So the first thing that we have to master is that we're going to size our short circuit ground fault protection from the motor FLC, the full load current, and not the FLA, the full load amperes. And, you know, and we're not going to size it based off the nameplate rating. So uh, if you do have a nameplate that lists the FLC, that's fine. It'll literally say FLC and then list it. But if it's just an amperage stamped on the plate or if it says FLA next to it, you're actually not going to size it based off of that. We're going to learn how to size it this week. All right, so when we're dealing with short circuit ground fault protection, yes, we can use the next size up rule. Now that has to deal with overcurrent. So say if we fell into a situation where we had a 30 amp situation or 38 amp situation, we could next size up to a 40 amp overcurrent device to the next standard size. And we're going to learn all about this as the week unfolds. All right, so we're going to get our FLCs, our full load current values from table 430.248 for single phase and from table 430.250 for three phase. And we're going to size it according to the demand factors that are in table 430.52. All right, now we're going to learn how to read the three main tables that we're going to be using for short circuit ground fault protection sizing. All right, so first let's start off in 430.52. That's going to be on page 308 of the 2017 and page 319 of the 2020. So <clears throat> take a minute, pause the video if you need to, go ahead and get there. We're going to talk about this table, how it works, and how to work it. All right, so when we get to this table here, we're on page 319 of the 2020, and we get to 430.52. Remember, the first thing you do anytime you come to a table is read the black bold heading and make sure that you're in the right table. So we read it, a maximum rating of setting for motor branch circuit short circuit ground fault protective devices. Great, we're in the right table. One small distinction in a table, you're in the wrong table, you're, it's all the pieces. And a lot of the tables look the same, so always read the black bolt heading as soon as you get to the table. All right, so how this table's broke down is on the left-hand side is the type of motor. If you notice there, it says single phase and then poly phase, which is going to be you know, obviously your three phase and then squirrel cage and so on and so forth. So whatever your question or your real world, world scenario is, then you're just going to use that uh, respective one. So if you go over one column to the right, the black bolt heading says a non time delay fuse. And then if you go over one more, it says dual element fuels an instantaneous trip breaker and an inverse time breaker. Now what those are, are different types of, you know, overcurrent protection. And I use that uh, term loosely, but those are the different types of protection that you can choose from and your question or your real world scenario are you're actually going to be using one of these. So whether it's a dual element time delay fuse or an inverse time breaker like we use all the time, it's one of those things that uh, you're actually going to size it based off that. So that's that table. Let's go ahead and go to the next table. And I, I want before we move on from that table, I want to point out that when you're dealing with this table, you're going to come down and tee off. So let's say I had a three-phase motor and I had an inverse time breaker. Our demand factor is going to be 250%, and we're going to learn all about that as we go through this week. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next table. So the next table is 430.248. It's going to be on page 321 of the 2017 and page 332 of the 2020. Let's go ahead and go there now. 
And this is where we're going to learn to read our FLCs. So when we first get to the table, we read uh, the table, full load current in amperes for single phase AC motors. Okay, great. We're in the right table. And this table is a lot of fun. So on the left-hand side is going to list your horsepower. Um, and then across the top, the black bold headings are going to list your respective voltages. And then if you come down and you tee off with the horsepower and the voltage, that's going to tell you the amperage of that motor, and that's the FLC. So you come down, you select your horsepower, you slide over, you select your voltage, and then you tee off, and wherever that tees off at, that's going to be your FLC for that single phase motor. What's really cool about this is if you have any of the known two, you can find out the one that you don't know. So say if you knew the voltage and the amperage, you could find out the horsepower, or if you knew the horsepower and the voltage, you can find out the amperage, and back and forth either way. So it's very cool. Now let's go ahead and flip over to 430.250. So if you're in the 2020, it's just on the next page. And if you're in the 2017, it's just on the next page. So it's on page 322 of the 2017 and page 333 of the 2020. And this table is going to read just the same. One thing I do want to point out when you're dealing with both of these tables is that do not... Um, get thrown off by the voltages that they give you. Because if you look here, let's look at the black bolt heading. First thing we do is read the black bolt heading, uh, table 430.250, full load current for three phase AC motors. Bam, we know we're in the right section. And then if you, uh, I want to point your attention to the voltages across the top of that table. If you look there, it has 230 volts and it has 460. Well, you say, what about 208, 48, you know, 480, you know, what are these? Whatever it states in the table, just go by that. These are nominal voltages. It's calling it 230. Uh, you know, it does list 208 as 208. And then another distinction I want to make on the single phase table, if you look back over there, is that um, they have actually a 208 volt section. So if your question says 208 single phase, don't fix it for them. They put that on purpose, unless it's a typo, which if you're in the real testing center, it's probably not going to be a typo. You do whatever the question says. So if it says 208 single phase, even though it doesn't make sense intuitively, you do the values that are for, you know, you know, corresponding to that inside that table. So guys, I'm really excited about this series. I can't wait to continue on in it. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so let's recap very quickly just to get back on page for today. So we're going to relay the groundwork. We're going to size our motors uh, short circuit ground fault protection from the motor FLC and not the FLA or the nameplate rating. Yes, the next size up rule is OK. We're going to get our FLCs from table 430.248 for single phase, 430.250 for three phase, and we're going to size them according to the demand factors in 430.52. So today we're going to learn how to get our FLC and we're going to practice that. Now, uh, you know, you guys, if you may be wanting to become a master electrician and a lot of this stuff seems very repetitive and, you know, little pieces at a time, but I'm telling you, the only way to become a master is through serious repetition and a full of understanding understanding of what's going on. So just hang with me. We're going to build slow this week, but we're trying to build into master electrician. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right. So let's look at this sample question here. What is the FLC of a single phase, two horsepower, 115 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 22 amps? So we got a lot going on here, but we're going to use our keyword and index process and pick this apart one piece at a time. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to look that it is single phase. So if single phase, then we need to go to table 430.248. So we have to make sure we're in the right table. So we flip to table 430.248. We read the black bolt heading. We make sure that it's single phase, FLCs. It is, so now we can continue. Now we're going to um, highlight and use the keyword index process and find out that we're using a two horsepower motor and a 115 volt motor. So that tells us everything that we need. We don't even need the rest of the question right now. One thing I want us to be mindful of is all of the motor questions are likely going to list the FLA or a nameplate rating or both. And that's just to trick you. Remember, when you size uh, you know, motor short circuit ground fault protection, we're going to be using the FLC. So in this case, we are going to use that and we're going to select 24 amps. So we come to our table, we're going to tee off with our uh, horsepower and we're going to go over to our respective voltage and we're going to find out that it's 24 amps. Great job.
All right, let's do another one. So we take a look at it. What is the FLC of a single phase, five horsepower, 230 volt motor with a nameplate rating of 25 amps? Why don't you pause the video and see if you can find this one out before we get to it? So we're going to break it down one piece at a time. The first thing that we're going to set apart is that we're in the single phase table. That lets us know where to go. Then we're going to come through and we're going to highlight that it's a five horsepower, 230 volt motor. So now we head to table 430.248. We're in the single phase and we're doing a five horsepower, 230 volt motor. So we go down to five horsepower. We tee off with 230 volts and that is going to give us a 28 amp FLC. Great job. All right, now let's do a three phase version. All right, so we, what is the FLC of a three phase, five horsepower, 208 volt motor with a nameplate FLA of 14 amps? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna establish that it's three phase. So we're using our keyword index process. We pull out that it's three phase. That's gonna lead us to table 430.250. Then we're gonna pull out that it's a five horsepower, 208 volt. So we go to our table. We read our black bolt heading at the top, make sure we're in the right table. When we get there, then we go to five horsepower on the left-hand side, and then we tee off across the top with 208 volts, and then we're gonna slide down and we're gonna select our FLC. I highly encourage you when you get into these tables to use a piece of paper or a pencil or some type of straight edge to make sure that you don't get off in your selection. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this now, and we find out that our FLC is 16.7 amps. Whew, let's get to it. All right, let's do one more for today. What is the FLC of a three-phase, 10 horsepower, 460 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 13.2 amps? So the first thing we're going to pull out is that it's three phase and we're going to head to table 430.250. Then we have to, you know, figure out which horsepower and voltage that we're dealing with. And we're going to have a 10 horsepower motor at 460 volts. So we're going to use this table just like we did before. We're going to slide down and select 10 horsepower. We're going to slide over until we reach the column that's 460 volts. We're going to use a piece of paper or pencil to make sure it lines up. And we are going to select and we're going to find out that we have a 14 amp FLC for this motor. I'm really excited for you guys. Listen, you can do this. Um, this is becoming a master, understanding the craft. And hopefully, you know, my bargain is, is that you guys will go out and teach someone else that someone else can learn and someone else can learn and someone else can learn. So if there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, please just let me know. You can call, text or email me anytime. Let's get to it. All right, today we're going to learn how to select the proper demand factor for sizing short circuit ground fault protection. What demand factor for an inverse time breaker would you select for a three phase, 10 horsepower, 460 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 13.2 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? So the first thing that we're going to pick out is that it is three phase because when we get to table 430.52, we're going to have to be in the three phase column. Then we're going to point out that it's an inverse time breaker. So we head over to that table for 30.52 and we come down on the left hand side and select our type motor. Then we come across the top and we select that we're using an inverse time breaker. And we're going to find out when we tee off that we have a 250% demand factor. And we're going to learn how to apply that tomorrow. Let's do another one. What demand factor for a dual element fuse would you select for a three phase, 10 horsepower, 460 volt motor with a nameplate FL rating, A rating of 13.2 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? First thing we're gonna pick out is that it's three phase. The next thing that we're gonna pick out is that it's a dual element fuse. So we head over to table 430.52. We slide over on the left hand side and we make sure that we're in the three phase column. Then we're going to slide over to the dual element fuse and make sure that we're in the correct column. Then we come down and tee off and we find out that it is 175% demand factor. Great job.
Let's do one more. What demand factor for a non-time delay fuse would you select for a single phase, 10 horsepower, 460 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 13.2 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? The first thing we're going to pick out is that it's single phase in this case, so we have to be very careful when we go to table 430.52. Then we're going to select that it is a non-time delay fuse. So we just go through the same process. We come down and we go on the left-hand side of table 430.52. We come over and we tee off with our respective type of overcurrent and we're going to select 300%. I'm very excited for you guys. Tomorrow we're going to get into bringing this whole thing together and by Friday you're going to be a pro at this. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I'm really excited about today's video. We're going to be bringing together everything that we've been learning this week and actually selecting our short circuit ground fault protection size. What size inverse time breaker would you select for a three phase, 10 horsepower, 460 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 13.2 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? Remember, when we're sizing short circuit ground fault protection, we're never going to use the FLA or the nameplate rating. We're only going to use the FLC. So the first thing that we've got to point out is that it's three phase, 10 horsepower, 460 volt. And the second thing that we want to point out is that it's also an inverse time breaker. Now we can go through and piece by piece make our selections. So first we're going to find out what our FLC is. So we're going to head to table 430.250 because it's three phase. On the left hand side we're going to go down with our horsepower, then we're going to come across the top, find our voltage, and we're going to go down and select our FLC. In this case it's 14 amps. Now we're going to find out what our demand factor is in table 430.52. So when we get there, we start on the left hand side with our type of motor. Then we're going to come across and our um, type of overcurrent protection is inverse time breaker. So when we tee off with it, we're going to find out that it's a demand factor of 250%. Now we have to do the math. We take 14 multiplied by 2.50. That's going to give us 35 amps. Now we have to head to table 240.6a and we're going to select our next standard size. Okay, so when we get there, we get to 240.6a, we find out that 35 is actually a standard size. Now that may not be one we use in the field very often, but when you're testing or if this were to be truly code legal, that would be the size breaker or fuse that you would have to select. So that's going to be our choice. And in this case, it's going to be 35 amps for our short circuit ground fault protection. Great job. All right, y'all, this is how we become a master. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Let's do it again. What size dual element fuse would you select for a three phase, five horsepower, 208 volt motor with a nameplate FLA of 15 amps for short circuit and ground fault protection? Let's set aside what type it is. It's a three phase, five horsepower, 208. Now let's make the distinction that it is a dual element fuse. Now let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we can solve the problem. First, we find our FLC. It's in table 430.250. We find out that it's 16.7 amps. Now we're going to find our demand factor in table 430.52. We find out that it is 175%. Now we're going to do the math. We take 16.7 multiplied by 1.75. That's going to give us 29.22 amps. We're going to drop it down. That's going to become 29. And we're going to head to table 240.6a to our next standard size overcurrent and we're going to select a 30 so that's going to be our choice 30 amp now that's going to be your first point of disconnect and your short circuit ground fault protection for this motor let's get to it What size dual element fuse would you select for a single phase, 5 horsepower, 115 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 52 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? First thing that we're going to pick out is that it's single phase, 5 horsepower, 115 volts. Then we're going to point out that it's a dual element fuse. Let's get to it. First, we're going to find what our FLC is, and this time we're in table 430.248. So we come there, we go on the left-hand side for our horsepower, we come across the top for our voltage, we go down and find out that our FLC is 56 amps. Now let's go find our demand factor. We head back to table 430.52, 
and we're going to start on the left hand side single phase come over what type of overcurrent protection and we're going to select 175 percent is the demand factor now we got to bear that math out do 56 multiplied by 1.75 that is going to give us 98 amps now we head over to table 240.6a we're going to select the next standard size and it's a 100 ampere so that's going to be our choice our short circuit ground fault protection for this motor is going to be 100 amps All right, guys, I threw this in for a little bit of fun. I want you to hang with me, and this one's going to be a ball. All right, so what size instantaneous trip breaker would you select for a single phase, three horsepower, 230 volt motor with a nameplate FLA rating of 15 amps for short circuit ground fault protection? So we make the distinction that it's single phase, three horsepower, 230, and we recognize that it's an instantaneous trip breaker. Now, this is where the fun begins. So first, we're going to find out our FLC, 430.248 we're going to find out that it's 17 amps no big deal right now we head to table 430.52 and this is where it gets fun so we find out that our demand factor is 800 percent so we're literally going to take 17 multiplied by 8 that's going to give us 136 amps we head to table 240.6a we make our next standard selection that's going to be a 150 amp overcurrent device now what's so amazing about this is that if you were to go size the wire this is what you would end up with you would take 17 multiplied by 1.25 and depending on the terminals and uh, several different factors let's say you selected a 10 gauge wire you could legally take that 10 gauge wire and put it on a 150 amp breaker for this short circuit ground fault protection and I was thinking about this it wouldn't even fit in the lug you would likely have to change over you know in some type of Polaris or Nimbus connector or some type of other lug you would literally have to change over to a wire that would be listed to fit inside of that overcurrent device so it's just kind of funny I want you guys to think about that now if it was a fuse it might be a little bit easier but the lug may not even you know be big enough if it was you know a lug situation and then you pop the fuse in so just want you guys to think about that one but this is how you guys size it I'm really proud of you guys uh, if you watch this video tomorrow we're gonna be dropping the compilation video where we put all the pieces together in one video for you and if you practice 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 we can all become masters together I'd like to joke a lot and I say between all of us we make one really good electrician let's go ahead and get to it that's our lesson for today, but before we go, if this channel is helping you, inspiring you, motivating you, I just ask if you could please like and share it so more people can get it in. Let's get to it.